Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast roundup. It was a jam-packed weekend of motorsport throughout the world, but we're going to focus first of all on USA or uh, USA and Great Britain's because we're going to find out what was best, Miami or Kansas in terms of Formula One and NASCAR. And in the UK, we had BTCC and BGT, Silverstone and Brands Hatch. So we're going to find out if you're a spectator, which sport, which uh, race was the most exciting. Plus, we're going to catch up. Yeah, I'm going to catch up with your Formula E trip to Monaco. I'm looking forward to hearing about that. You were there last week. And the Superbikes from Spain and the the women, the Formula One Academy, we'll finish off with. But yeah, first... It's just this idea. I, I was a spectator as a kid, you know, clinging to the fences. I'm a true fan. So it's a question of debating where would I rather have been in America? Would I rather have been in Miami or Kansas? And coming back to Britain, where would you rather have been? Would I rather have been at Brands for the BTCC or Silverstone? It's, we'll, come, we'll, we'll debate them all. But obviously we start with Formula One in well, Miami, baby. Well, before the race, you're going to choose Miami all day long, all day long over Kansas. Before the race, the razzmatazz. The have you been to Miami? The... Yeah, only only a couple of times, like for flying visit. <laughs> it's, quite it's just classic America. Well, it's very Spanish America, isn't it? Very um, Latino what's that word, Latino. Um, yeah, but obviously the headline is to go to a Grand Prix, but then the actual entertainment. This is what I'm, as a racing fan. And this is where, of course, Formula One is diverging very fast, very quick from the from the days when I was a kid to where it is now. It's massive entertainment. Um, all the drivers didn't like the bloody entertainment early on, apparently. <laughs> They're sort of standing out for extra 20 minutes and being introduced individually. <laughs> through uh, the smoke, said, through the haze, oh, yeah. the being wrapped into it. <laughs> but I actually thought, you know, with the build of qualifying, thanks to Charles Leclerc once again binning it, that, oh, gosh, it could actually be an exciting Grand Prix. You don't thought building up that it's going to be a, a bore because it's going to be you know, no overtaking. Um, Leclerc's funny, isn't he? He keeps some. When you think last year, he, he crashed at Imola during the Grand Prix. He crashed at Paul Rico during the Grand Prix. You know, just when there was still a chance of, of him trying to catch Max. And again, I think, it, to be honest, I think he's just a driver that just gets nearer the limit on every lap on every corner than others tend to. I think he just gives it 100%. Um, and he spins off in halfway through qualifying. And then we had this amazing grid, which, I mean, it's I, I just... It's looked... grid. I, I only saw the grid I was travelling, and we'll come on to that in a moment. But And, and I so only saw the results. And I, So I said to the people I was around, oh, it must have been a wet qualifying. That's bizarre. Yeah. I must have had a thunderstorm yeah. or something. So, oh, no. No, it's <laughs> just no, so many people. I mean, I looked at the difference, just a few of the in-team rivalries, because, of course, we had Perez on pole, with Max in ninth. Um and in the, in, the, in the Mercedes, you know, we had George 6th on the grid and Lewis 13th. And um, I think often when the Mercedes is a worse car, George is the one that sort of tends to, you know, yeah, rough much it more out. Out of yeah. yeah. Um, and we had K-Mag 4th out of the blue, but once again, you know, whoa, K-Mag. <laughs> and the Ferrari sites was 3rd, Leclerc was 7th because he'd fallen off, you know. Then we had the, the biggest variety was looking at Aston Martin. We had Fernando Alonso, 3rd on the grid. And Lance Stroll, 18th, having failed to make it through the Q2. Incredible. It's quite a thing to see on Lance. I mean, bless Lance. He's a very, very good driver. We all know we don't think he's brilliant. And it was Danica Practica, Danica Patrick was praising Fernando. You know, she'd been listening to that radio even when when um, Alonso, Fernando was was telling the radio for Baku, wasn't he? Yeah, tell Lance to put his brake balance in, tell Lance to do this, you know. And she thought it was so wonderful. He was trying to help this young driver. Well, of course he doesn't mind. A, daddy's paying his fees. <laughs> and B, he knows however much help he gives him, he's not going to be anywhere near as quick as Fernando is. Absolutely. That was like helping out a teammate that's going to be quicker than you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, huge differences. So many cars all over the grid. McLaren, though, just when we thought back, they had a little bit of oh. were going better. What, 16th and 18th on the grid? And then off the Nick de Vries went to the back of Lando on the first quarter of the race. That ruined his day. Uh, Something, yeah, at um, the contrast, Alpine sort of came back up again. They, they ended up what, eighth and ninth, I think, in the, well, they're on doing the race. so much better then. than that as well, weren't they, at one stage? Yeah, they were at one stage. Um, so it turned out, but then it wasn't 
as exciting as we hoped it might be. I don't think the race. It didn't rain. There was some threat of rain, which would have obviously spiced things up. See, I have to say, um, in, in Lance Stroll's defence, I do think he's a great, great driver. He's certainly not one of the world greats. Good. Don't use the great word. Steady, steady. Yeah. Steady. Well, no, I don't think steady. that. And that's I he's did very good. that about he's a very good on, driver. on Twitter this week to one of our regular uh, followers as well. Um, but uh, Lance Stroll is bloody good in the rain. He's a really good wet weather driver. He, he, is. he, he does. He has these moments. Well, You're right. He does. And he starts his first laps are usually pretty brilliant. He always tends to move up two or three places. Um, but yeah, the race. I mean, it, it had moments, but it, you know, Max got through the traffic so quickly it was it was almost a joke. Um, the best well, battle well, though, was the Mag Magnuson versus Leclerc. Yeah. That that was great fun. From in, in fact, Max got them both in one go because they were so busy squabbling over seventh place that uh, Max just held back a bit and then blasted by both of them when they got into a bit of a bit of trouble together. Well, I was flying back from the south of France, so I managed to get the first sort of 15, maybe 20, 15 minutes or so on the radio um, on the on the um, plane as we're before we took off. Yeah. And Perez was holding off, holding sort of 25 second lead. And they're saying, well, Max is catching up very quickly. And but Perez is obviously holding something back. My new hero, <laughs> Perez. And then I got off the plane, looked at the result and I was very depressed. Sorry, sorry. So Chico. easy, wasn't it? In the end, uh, Max had a bit of a bad Baku, but he's back. Max is back with a statement <laughs> in the heart. Yeah, they were booing. They were booing him at the driver intros. And at the end, I don't mind that. And in fact, Max very kindly on the interview, he just over his shoulders, rubbed his shoulders, shrugged his shoulders, and say, "I don't mind. I'm on top of the podium. I don't care what they do." And, and good for him. Yeah, America, say, good for him. Say that. But there were a lot of Red Bull fans that were doing that as well. well they're not Red Bull fans. Red Bull wearing uh, jerseys, so they're obviously Perez fans from, like you said, oh, Latin America. Of course, yeah, Latin so America. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, called yeah. him. Oh, yeah, there would be the Mexican influence. A hole. Yeah. <laughs> But good for him. You got to. Well, well they do back. this in, yeah. in NASCAR. They're, they're, you know, Kyle Busch is this villain. It's quite good to have a villain sometimes. Even football, you have villains, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, nobody likes, nobody likes Vardy, do they? We always boo Vardy as soon as he comes anywhere near Southampton. But um, there's always villains in every sport. So, uh, I, and I think it's good that Max doesn't mind being a villain because he just does his well, he is talking a villain. He on is the a track. Villain. He is a villain because he's so unlikable off the track. He's not particularly likable on the track, to be honest. No, with you, I so. met him. I interviewed him in Monaco. He's likable off the track. In fact, you get him away from you know the Formula no, One pressure. The things he says, well, maybe away from the Formula One pressure. The things he says and the things that Christian Horner say, that the, the whole Red Bull team just, I just think they irritate people, and I don't know whether they're doing it intentionally, but because they're so bloody good, they're so amazing, and he's he is by far the uh, uh, best driver uh, out there at the yeah, moment. At the moment, the anyway, car. I mean, it, it, yeah. it was an interesting race. There was plenty sort of going on. That that. that uh, Magnuson battling was going on. But, you know, it was amazing that the Mercedes got through to what they finished. George was fourth, you know, Lewis was sixth. It's often how we see Mercedes in, in a big state, but in the races, they do tend to sort of still kick in there and get in the top six. And they're hoping um, that, that, that in a couple of weeks' time with these new changes to the car, that's going to make a radical difference. I don't, I don't know. Oh, it's, it's, even, it's, even Lewis says, I've never done an upgrade that gives you half a second. And, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, that's the trouble. It's, you know, like McLaren with their upgrades. It's so hard... It's always a, amazes me, really, that you can't transform a bad car. But it seems like once you've that concept, your monocoque and your whole the aero um, plan, the strategy they've taken, you can't reverse it and get things going. But um, so it wasn't that exciting a race. Well, of course, whenever you pointed the camera at an American crowd to the grandstand, you thought they were having the best time in the world ever, ever. Whoopy, whoopy, there, mate. There. <laughs> Uh, they're they're quite a crowd, the Americans. So drive, driver of the day, the Tiffany Dale driver of the day had to be Max. Oh, K Mag, no K Mag. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah if you want to drive this, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, Max just right. did what Max does, but for someone yeah. punching above his weight, you're right. As you say, Max, he sort of was hanging on to seventh, wasn't he? I think he lost it to the two Alpines just towards the end. He faded badly. Um, and yeah. Alonso, Alonso was solid again all weekend. Again. Yeah, solid. Another another good solid Aston Martin. Yeah. But it's all a bit solid. Whereas, would I rather <laughs> have been in Kansas City, baby? I mean, this is, oh, it's, it's one of the best tracks. Again, I always say to watch, you'll watch it's a boring weekend. Not all NASCAR races are exciting, but Kansas, the one and a half mile over, is famous for being this three-wide track. And um, and it just turned up one of the most spectacular races on Sunday night at, at, in England because, I mean, they were just at it. And it's amazing how you go three wide, 200 miles an hour, 150 miles an hour. But, of course, most of the drama was created by the number five, Kyle Larson, who was leading at about lap six. And uh, Tyler Reddick, they, they do this slide up. 
and it was Tyler Reddick was sec- trying to get into second ahead of Ross Chastain. I think it was in third. And of course, they they tried to come up into a gap that's only a car length. Um, length. It's a bit like Russ Swift doing his parallel parking with a handbrake. And they try to slot into a gap when there's only about six inches of the car in front and six inches of the car behind. And he misjudged it and tapped last. And the last one went spinning off wildly on lap six from the lead. And then the restart was 32nd and last. So we had this story of Larson coming through the pack. Meanwhile, up front, they were all three wide and overtaking and spinning out. And Carl Bush spun out and clobbered the wall and others were out. And and it just developed and developed and developed until, of course, the five got back to the head of the field. Um, and it looked like he was going to win the race, had an amazing battle with his teammate for about five or ten laps. Um, then uh, the 11 came up. Hamlin, Hamlin came up, catching, catching, catching. And then about five laps to go, he was on his tail. And it's a most amazing dice. Again, it's always this sort of you lunge down low. You actually get a hedge, and when you look at the camera, and of course the guy up high has the momentum coming out of the bank corners, and so he just creeps ahead with the guy down low is trying to slide up in front of him. Um, and on the last lap, Hamlin was just on last and was sliding a lot rear tires, and he just got down the backs and through that side draw, he just tapped Kyle on the back. I don't think it was that intentional, to be fair to, to Hamlin, even though he was booed big time because <laughs> Larson got out. But of doesn't Denny Hamlin get booed a lot? Wall. He, he yeah, gets not. Yeah, he booed a lot anyway. Um, so, so Larson hit the flipping wall flat out down the back straight recovered luckily to finish second and Hamlin took the win um, and then of course you had a punch up in the pit lane now this pushing around with throwing names at each other the Formula <laughs> 1 boys too uh, Noah Gragson who's, uh, who's got a bit of a reputation has not been the most popular he's just come up from the uh, Xfinity the second division recently um, he was upset with what uh, Ross Chastain had done halfway through the race they were going three wide and uh, he wrote his rosting in the room and Gregson hit the ball. Um, anyway, so Gregson dragged the old suit a bit and then then Chastain gave him a perfect right hook and then it all kicked off and the NASCAR officials are in. So, you know, it's it's not just entertaining on the track, NASCAR. You get a bit of entertainment after. It's a bit of afters. Imagine um, imagine George and Max scrapping when uh, when they're from last <laughs> yeah. weekend. Imagine them having but, a scrap. But the other thing is, you know, as a race fan, at Miami, they had one and a half hours of entertainment, 57 laps. You watch the cars go by 57 times. The NASCAR was three and a half hours of entertainment with 267 laps. I'm sorry, I'll be asleep. Which you can see. Well, the, now the good thing is, you see, with the yellows, where you're going to have like a 10 minute, you know you're, you've got 10 minutes for the restart. Okay, get a beer. Get a beer, get a yeah. burger, wander yeah. around. In the meantime, you've That's got that too long. headset on. I prefer to do the. I tell you what, I, I'll ask you as well. Yeah, I would yeah. prefer to go to the Grand Prix and whether it's Miami was a bit of a snooze fest, go to the Grand Prix, watch some support races because there's always good races. Uh, before, did they have any in Miami? I don't I'm know. sure they did. No, might, have, might have had some drifting or something. I don't know. They there were no wanted. marks on the tarmac with drifting, so I'm not sure they had anything. They've got so much razzmatazz going on. They have. I haven't got, ta- they? I haven't got time <laughs> to run support races. So the where w would you series, prefer to w be? Series, run. Well, I think it's quite obvious. I would have been in Kansas. You'd yeah. have been in Miami. Yeah. You'd have been up there hobnobbing it around, wouldn't you? Another little free cocktail, fancy pina colada or something, wouldn't you? You'd be up there. Little I'd be on, on the, the six. Seat. I'd have my headset on. We'd be tuna, listening to all the drivers, watching all this amazing overtaking going on. <laughs> I mean, an overtake can take like 10 laps in these events. You know, you're nudging past and getting boring. back and side drafting. No, it's not. No, no, I, I, I get it. I get it. I get that uh, it's very strategic. Strategic. And I'm then the pit to... stops. The pit stops. Yeah, you see they're four fascinating. mechanics coming out. You know, brr, 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 you know yeah. oh, big trolley jack going up and down and the pit stop takes about you know, 15 seconds. I don't know, more than that. And, you know, I, 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 as you know, I had a coffee this morning with our mate, uh, Lucky Supercars, Joe, uh, and we're talking about motor racing in general. And it doesn't matter what level it is, whether it's grassroots or Formula One or whatever it is, there's always lunging, there's always controversy. There's always, it's, a, it's a fascinating sport, really, yeah. isn't it? You're always going for the gap that's not there. and <laughs> Whatever it is, what level it is, whatever level, especially, especially him. So it's Kansas cool. City, baby. Okay. So what about when we come back to England? Then? So had we been in Britain, which I was, and you were half here, would you have gone to Brands Hatch, the BTCC, or to Silverstone for the British GT? Well, I'll tell you before. Um, I'll tell you my decision before would be BTCC because uh, Brands just because it's Brands Hatch because yeah. Brands Hatch is one of the best circuits in the world to watch yeah. motorsport because it's fun. Go but, on, but 
overtaking is incredibly hard. Yes. And the higher up the levels of motorsport with more grip and more professional drivers, you get very, very little overtaking. And that is the only... I love Brent's that short circuit. Um, but most of the races ended up being fairly processional. I mean, just to com- you know, compare them both, but, you know, Brands that's just on the Sunday, you had 12 races for your entertainment, three touring cars, two Porsches, two Minis, and two Formula 4s, and three Legends, which I would, that's good fun, little Legends, putting different cars on the BTC format is, I think, a good idea. Um, so you've got a lot of racing, but just not enough overtaking, unless your name's Ash Sutton. Because um, <laughs> Ash, yet again, he was, he was literally the only one that really made any sort of competitive overtakes. Obviously, the first grid, there, was some there were lots of other takes going on midfield. But I think Ash Sutton is about qualified fourth, I think. And he was just stalled. Dan Camish was on pole, his Ford teammate, uh, and made two bad starts on his two pole positions and dropped back. Um, and Ash was just battling with the BMWs of Colin Turkington and Jake right. Hill. I think it's important so, to say that the BMW, as we know, is the only real-world drive car on the grid now. And it was uh, there right. was wet, dry all weekend. Um, and uh, the, the front-wheel drive cars were certainly the, the easier to drive in the wet, weren't they? Well, they were dry-dry on the Sunday. On the Sunday, so, yeah. So, yeah, dry-dry on the Sunday, the actual racing on the Sunday. But, of course, the BMWs make a better start still. They still they give them taller and taller first gears, I think, with the BMWs. They still outdrag the front wheel. So it was, it was close. I mean, it was entertaining. It was close. But then, of course, we had this huge controversy in the main race. Um, not the main race, the reverse grid race. So Turkington won. Well, who won the first race? Turkington held on in the first race to beat Ash Sutton and, and Dan, his teammate, the two uh, Napa cars. The second race, Ash got ahead of the BMWs and won the second race ahead. So Tom Ingram going on the high end, then Turkington. But then Ash drew number 11. It's terrible. They're now getting the winning driver to pick the number for the reverse grid. And of course, the bigger the number, the more work he's got to do to get to the front. Um, so Ash drew number 11 out of 12 so he had to he knew he'd start 11 and he came through just just charging through and charging through until he caught up um ricky collard wasn't it who was uh, he was third of the, with reverse good he'd started third behind bobby thompson on pole so he had this fabulous race on the telly of um ash working away at ricky ricky was doing an amazing job defending then the last lap ash got by and ricky got back past it was a tremendous last lap race ricky got good history is he good yeah, solid, he's a kid, yeah, yeah. single seater gt race that done a lot um of course son of um top collard who's won the touring car championship but in the end we knew the last three we knew on the telly that he'd had a 10 second penalty for track limits so we've come back to track limits because Tim Harvey doing the post-race analysis said, well, the crowd was robbed and Ricky was robbed and, you know, but the penalty was up on the board. The penalty said, you know, you've got a 10-second penalty. Yeah. But what we don't know, because it's this new system we talked about coming in where they're saying that if you go a millimetre over with one wheel, you get a one second. But you don't get told you get one second until the race is over. I was a bit confused because the BTCC say they've adopted the new um, track limits rulings, but then nobody seemed to know what they were. <laughs> anyway, so I don't mind the old ones where you do it once, and then you get a warning flag, you do it again, and you get a penalty. So at least you've been warned. But nobody during the race seemed to have spotted the commentators or the TV cameras whether he got the red, black, and white warning flag. Because he came into the pits after thinking he won the most amazing race. And drove in oh. to try and get up number one on the podium when the oh. marshals would stop him and he just sat there and he wouldn't get out of the car and he wouldn't move. Um, so the, the, the this track limits, because Harvey was going on that, you know, this ruins the racing, we can't have it, and it's terrible. But then, you know, Tim's one of the ones that's anti having tire stacks on the center of, of um, chicanes. So it goes back to this whole debate about track limits, which is going to live with us for a long time. Um, you know, Tim doesn't want tire stacks and Abby Eaton for very good reasons doesn't want she's always campaigning about sausage big curves. sausage curves after she broke her back you know in America yeah. with her. but that was a curb putting at 90 degrees to the line of travel to stop you running wide but then if you don't have curbs and you don't have tire stacks you've got to have time penalties the, well yeah. yeah so it's it's this debate but surely the both. team would tell him they're all mic'd up they're all they're, they're well all I know well that's what, that's what or a pit, everyone or a pit board if it doesn't well, work you've got a pit board that's I what they're for whether, 
Well, maybe Ricky was going down the main street to look at his mirror permanently to see where Ash Sutton was. I don't. It, it was sounds weird. like me. I missed the pit board on the very few times I've ever had to have one. It's it's actually harder than you think, isn't it? When you're when you're fighting yeah. off and yeah. you're getting ready for paddock corner. Uh, this, so, uh, so what's your view on it? I mean, should it happen? I think it should, but I think I, don't, the, no, I think you should be I'm, made aware. You I be... want bigger curbs back, but then the motorbike boys, <laughs> you can't have bigger curbs. You know, and yeah. it doesn't have to be gnarly or but just a big curb that when you slide up it, if you go over the top of it, you shoot over the top, you know, with something you can almost rest against it slightly. Yeah. But I mean, I noticed that Graham Hill bent coming down the hill, uh, that left hander. Yeah. I saw quite a few cars with four wheels inside the white line. Now, that to me is a worse track limit. Than the going slightly wide because that gives you so much of an advantage on the next straight because yeah. you straight line the corner. So that's the sort of, but that's where you need a whacking great curb on the apex. Yeah. But of course, if you get pushed over the whacking curb, as Abby Eater will tell you, you end up flying up in the air and landing in your little single seater and breaking your back. So oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> People are saying we'll go back to the old curb and grass and then, you know, but the trouble is why um, Palmer doesn't like it at Brands. Is when they had the curve of the grass, then there'd slowly be a ditch being dug with all the cars going over and digging up the dirt. Yeah. Which is why you'll see curbs got wider and wider and wider because the track of. Uh, but then people will just take more and more. Yeah, off more and the more curb. and more. I know, I know, I know, I know. Anyway, it raised its ugly head big time because it was a very entertaining race. And Ricky was a shame that Ricky didn't win. But then, you know, Ash said he'd been following on you. He was, he was all over the place. So, you know, Ricky maybe held his lead because. He gained an advantage by running wide. Yeah. So, anyway, so that was Brands. Exciting I racing. Think I would rather be a brand at, at Silverstone because the 36 GT cars, I mean, it's a three hour race. I know that's already a bit long for your attention span. I do understand <laughs> that. Um, but, funny enough, in many ways, because of new safety regulations, this three hour race was almost becoming like a NASCAR race. Because people got lucky when the yellows, if the yellows go out, you know, just when you're about to fuel or just when you've just fueled, you know, it can make a huge difference to your strategy. So people can get lucky. Um, and the, that, the only thing with the British GT was getting a bit complicated because they have a success um, time penalty in pit stop. So people that won the previous race, first, second and third, get an extra 10, 20 or 30 seconds in the pits when they stop for fuel and drive changes on these three-hour races. So it got a bit a bit um, complicated. But Joe Osborne, who talks nonstop, Joe, you could talk a bit less, but <laughs> is very, very good at delivering yeah. information. Um, he tried to keep us in the in the um, right way, but uh, it, it was a great GT race because um, I'm a bit biased. The Barwell boys gained a great advantage with their Lamborghini. And my brother's team, and Sandy Mitchell, came out in the lead for the last twenty laps. I think it was. Uh, but he was tracked down by Dan Harper with the BMW, got by him with about three or four laps to go. And it was a great run to the finish. You know, McLaren was third, Aston Martin fourth, Mercedes fifth. So big variety. Um, and his support races, you see, were pretty good. Only nine races as opposed to 12. They had two Janetta races. They got the juniors, of course, now, which is quite entertaining. They got GT, they got GB3 and GB4, so two single-seated categories, variety. Um, in fact, in the Jetta juniors, here we are, I've noticed... There's another girl, another girl on the way up, Aliska Palmowski. Where's she from? British. British. Yeah. Birmingham, I think, Midlands. Yeah. And came second in one of the junior races. So maybe this is our another hope for the future. Sounds so a well bit done, Alicia. Polish heritage, maybe, with a name Quite like possibly. that? Possibly. I would never yeah. dare. I would never dare guess anything in that no, in the so, race. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. No, I know. We're allowed so, to just. Yeah, so, that's not. Anyway. Nice. Um, <laughs> So it was really a 14 cars in the lead lap, Silverstone. So I think I'd rather have been at Silverstone. I'd, I'd go back to the BTCC at the next round or the previous round, but just because just it's brand short circuit, it's if spectacular, but not always competing. Competing, no question, Silverstone, BGT, but oh, yeah. otherwise, it's, but um, spectating for me, I'll say Brands Hatch. Thanks very much. Yeah. You're back in a bar somewhere, aren't you? Those are hospitality we gonna units. Just yeah, we're going to mention that line. big um, big crash at uh, Brands Hatch as well. Um, Which one? Was it a big crash? Five cars? Uh, big the pile legends. Up? Legends. Oh, was it the legends? legends? Yeah, it was the legends. Pile. There's right, always a pile of legends. legends. Yeah, There's right, always a pile right. of legends. <laughs> there was a big crash in Silverstone. <laughs> You're right. A, in the middle of the flipping, um, <laughs> I call it the Beckett's Bypass. I don't know what it's called now. But um, uh, someone spun. And they rejoined at 90 degrees to the flow of traffic. And despite waved yellows on the way in, someone T-boned this, this other car. It was a huge shunt that caused the last of the big yellows. 
Um, but it's always, of course, there's always, it's got that bit of traffic element to GT racing because it's GT3 and GT4. It's about half, 18 GT3s and 18 yeah. GT4s. So you've always got that big speed differential, which makes for exciting. People get blocked, you know, when you, when you come up to lap them and it, it creates overtaking opportunities. So, yes, it was pretty good, I think. So that's your options. So, so we're both at different places, <laughs> Britain and America. <laughs> but where we move on to the, the rest of the sport and the rest of the world, the main races, you, of course, are in Monaco. So you can bring us your first-hand report now. We've been looking forward to this for a week of Formula E. Well, I was indeed in Monaco. So the race was Saturday, uh, qualifying and, was Saturday yeah, morning. Saturday, yeah. and, and the race was Saturday lunchtime. And, and I didn't and, get, my flight was 6 a.m. Saturday. Uh, yes. CA decided to cancel the flight, so I arrived in Monaco 10.30 p.m. <laughs> on Saturday. You still <laughs> went for the night out, then. You still I, still went went for, night I still went for a night out. I'm still struggling now, getting over it now, <laughs> on Monday Monday afternoon. Um, so I watched it on no. Channel 4 in, in a hotel at Heathrow. So uh, and I thought it was a very good... I have to say, I thought it was a very exciting and very good race. And I, I probably saw a lot more, and it was a lot more interesting watching it uh, uh, on TV than it would have been... It was good-ish. For, good-ish. For, for Formula E, I think that was that was right up but there. But the first 20 laps, it was just a train of, of cyclists I know. cycling slowly I know. to the countryside. Oh, a little bit of you know people manoeuvring for position, a few overtakes going on. Check my battery. Can I go a bit quicker? And, and it looked spectacular. You had the whole field was just a train. So it's, yeah, it really was, wasn't it? A peloton. They're all of, just yeah. go, a peloton. Peloton, that's the word. But and it was Nick Castu who seems to have this habit of... Um, Knowing when, because the cyclist, there was you, you're waiting for one to make a break, aren't you? Yeah. Out of the pack, and it was Cassidy that made the break. He's a big lad, by um, the way. I, I saw him yesterday, met him yesterday, and he's okay, he's, he's tall, oh. he's like six foot. Yeah, I was surprised. Ooh. Well, he seems six foot Wait, to me. Pump. Most people seem tall to me, to be honest. You know that, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's a bit like Formula is a bit like Formula One at the moment because uh, unless you've got the Jaguar drivetrain, um, or like a Red Bull in Formula One, the drag the Jaguar drivetrain is just dominating. So the Jaguar seemed to have got the right. So you say of, that in qualifying uh, initially, Nissan, Nissan were uh, right up there. I think yeah, that's, that, yeah, that's because that's flat out. Yeah, they got the extra power. Yeah, but it's this: yeah. the race is all about and Formula E. Say officially, it's a conservation formula, and it seems like the Jaguar power plant they can conserve more, so they have got more. So once they've all been sitting in the pack, you know, um, Cassidy can say, "Oh, I've got point, I've got one point six now. I can go." And they actually get the radio. They get the radio. Go, go, go now. You get to the stage of the race when you could, and in fact, because there was a safety car with just five laps to go, uh, and they didn't add laps. Normally, they add laps, so if yes. they'd been going around slowly, not using, so they're able to go flat out. The exactly, last which five which laps. is good. I think that was a good thing that they could go flat out. They all had enough uh, battery to go flat out. But then, just when we talk about the race, there was uh, another clash, another mm. safety car. So they actually crossed the line under safety car. But it was only because a Cassidy lap. Was being... It was only a lap. He was very, it was very close. Cassidy and. The, the Mitch other Evans and the Mitch other in the Jaguar. Yeah. Mitch was following, and of course, um, the other because Porsche are usually up there. Jake Dennis and the Andretti yeah. Porsche. He was they, they were sitting there one, two, three, and it could have been a last lap lunge from someone, but we were we were robbed of that. Um, you see, Jake who's on pole, McLaren. They keep on qualifying well, but he obviously can't sustain the pace in the race, so he dropped to fifth. Uh, Dan Tictum, he leapt up into the lead at one yeah. stage very early on. But the lead changed quite a few times. There was lots well, of... because they didn't want to nobody wanted to lead. I, know, I understand that. <laughs> I get that. I get it. But Dan finished sixth. That must be his best position, I think, sixth. Um, so it, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad. But it, it's just... I mean, if you're, an, if you're a complete outsider watching them all around nose to tail, you're probably thinking, God, this is exciting. Look at all this. But if you know, if you're in the know, you know, you know... It's a slow bicycle race. No, it's that's not. About- no, it's not. No, that was that. It was no. That's that's unfair. I'm going to stick up for Formula E now because that's unfair. Oh, I no. thought that especially the last uh, third of the race was flat out, so you you can't ask for any more than that. And there was also overtaking. Interesting. Yeah, the last third of a race, only about seven laps. Yeah, but what was the, what's the corner of the hairpin um, by the uh, Fairmont Casino down the hill? It's a really. Well, I call it. I still call it the station hairpin. Okay, that's where what, the station used to be. But it used to be the fa- what was the previous? It's always changed. Lowe's, its name to what, was it Lowe's? Yeah, Lowe's. But, yeah. No, it's the Fairmont. It's the Fairmont. Happy Fairmont. Now, it's fair, yeah. yeah. But 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 interestingly, you would never do this in Formula One. They were going overtaking around the outside, so then they kept the inside yeah. going through the tunnel. But you couldn't yeah. do that in Formula One. But they somehow managed to get enough 
maybe i don't know maybe they, they just get more traction or something faster because of the electric torque well no because um, the bloke on the inside saying all right you can come by now so i'll <laughs> no, get you later not. they're not <laughs> There, there was still argy bargy. There was there's still your, your little bit of a share of argy bargy. <laughs> All right. Formerly. But Elsewhere. The, the, good, the good news is that we are invited to, with Cupra, to go and watch a, a race in London. We'll go to London next. So, not quite Monte Carlo, but we'll go to London, which okay. should be good. So, come along as well. We'll have a couple Ooh. of beers and we'll watch uh, some. Good well, I might have to you know, support Maserati as I'm now a Maserati man. Right. Okay. Did you, did you, you know I'm you, now, go you go Maserati. I'm now a Hendy, Hendy, Hendy Performance Ambassador. I have a Maserati Ghibli. Mm. Some testing is very lovely. Um, right elsewhere on the Mediterranean, we're so cheap. We say things like we get for nothing. Go back to real, real bicycle racing, <laughs> motor bicycle racing, Barcelona Superbikes. And guess who won? All three. It's getting a bit boring now, boys. It's getting very boring. <laughs> um, Bautista won all three races on his Ducati. Razgatliogu. And three seconds. Um, it's just, and the only name, the, new, the normal trio, Jonathan Ray dropped out of the normal three. He had third in the first race, but he dropped it in the second race big time. It was starting to drizzle. It's real spooky watching these boys when they're racing, and you know it's getting slippy. Yeah. And he was, he was, Raz Gatliogu took, was just taking second place off him, and he braked, and he just got on the white line with his front wheel, and he was braking from 200 miles an hour. Down it went. Which put him out of the second race, and uh, he had to come back up the grid, finish fifth. So yeah, super bikes. It was a spectacular. I get a bit bored. Nobody else winning. Never. Scott Redding on his BMW. Bradley Ray. Can someone tell me why our British champion Bradley Ray, who's also on a Yamaha, like Raz Gatliokas, has he not got the same bike? Can someone tell me? Comments. Come speaking, you speaking last of week. comments, we had lots of comments. Thank you so week. much. 53 comments we had last, wow. last week. We're, we're that's amazing. Time now. We're no, that is big time. That's that's brilliant. We really appreciate it because <laughs> normally we get about three. So uh, so thank so, you so much. Motorbikes. Tell me why what's wrong with Bradley Ray. Not Bradley. Yes, Bradley Ray. Yeah. Um, also down in España was the uh, the Formula One Academy, the, the, the young ladies. Um, where... <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Abby Pulling, who we thought with this British would win it all and win easily, you know, she was challenging, you know, top three Jamie in the series. Yeah, Jamie Chad, yeah. 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 She's had an absolute stinker yeah. of a season. I mean, started when in the first race in um, in uh, Austria, she qualified on pole for the two qualifying races. And then the bloody car got thrown out for me illegal, so that put her back then. Anyway, this weekend she had two DNFs in the first two races. They had third place, her only podium, I think, so far this year. She's Maybe she just likes the faster, more power, more downforce of... of well, yeah, the... she is going back to Formula yeah. 4, yeah. Um, but there was another win for the Emirati sisters. This time it was Hamda al Kwabasi, whereas Amna, her sister, won in the, in Austria. So there's another win for the Emirati. The Philippine driver, Bianca Bustamante, won the reverse grid race. And then Spain's Marta Garcia, who's now won three out of the six races, won the third race yet again. She's well on the top of the points. You know, the best Brits was Abby's had one third place and Chloe Grant had one fourth place. So Brits not doing too well. Abby's done in seventh place in the championship out of 15 drivers. Which is crazy because the Brits dominated uh, W Series, really. Yeah, exactly. Actually, they're talking about track limits. Valencia, where they were racing, a load of times disqualified in qualifying. Because Valencia is this horrible go-kart track, which motorbikes <laughs> are very good on, which has got no curbs. Of any height, it's massive tarmac runoff everywhere. I watched a DTM race there last, and they were just going, I'll overtake, well, I'll go off, and I'll overtake around the outside, you know. So the guy defending stays on what's supposed to be the track, he's just sailing around the outside. And they had loads of penalties for, you know, because they're doing it by, by penalties instead of by any sort of deterrent to stop you running wide. So were there pit boards and, or were there notifications to the driver to tell them? Yeah, it was live? after qualifying. I'm not sure the race where the match happened, okay. but certainly qualifying. I think the yeah. race they allow you a lot more. Of, Cheating, unless you actually over. I think a few people in Silverstone got overdone um, in the GB3 race for overtaking four wheels off from the you know, corner. And, and, and without stating the obvious, for those that haven't raced, I've only done a tiny bit of racing, but you push it to the limit as much as you possibly can. And in qualifying, when you know there's no marshals or when there's no sensors uh, watching, you do. You, you if you can get away with it, you do it. I oh, know you're going to be What's faster. The trouble? Yeah, and and, and you, you would come in with catering racing. You got no comms or anything like that, and you just hope that if you, <laughs> you did, been uh, pinged. yeah, you have been pinged. So yeah, so yes, all exciting roads, lots of variety. Really, when you think of Formula One to NASCAR, we were comparing, and then we compared touring cars to GTs, and then we got 
bikes and Formula One academies. It was Formula E's. It was a pretty hectic weekend. Like. And the same again coming up this weekend. Um, no Formula One. We've got Indy and Indy NXT with Jamie in it. And uh, that's up at the IndyCar road course race. So two different races there. Maybe that was who um, Jamie well, the road course. Hopefully. Hopefully she gets a bit testy. And it's, it's an easier course. It's quite simple. Uh, and hopefully she'll be more competitive. Where, where, where is that? Is that at Indianapolis? Indy, that? Yeah, with the, yeah. the road course in the middle. Um, and then World Rally Championship in Portugal. I haven't seen them for a couple of weeks. They're out. MotoGP, bound to entertain, but they're a stupid track, Le Mans. And um, that Le Mans, is that a go-kart track in France? <laughs> Formula One's went there, 1966. <laughs> they had one Grand Prix there. And I think all the drivers just, especially, th- these were the days where they still raced at Spa and Old Silverstone. Um, I raced there in, the, in, that, in that NASCAR, Euro NASCAR. And it's just got like five hairpins, but no, it's got no quick corners at all. But what was old Silverstone, Tiff? What was old Silverstone? What do you mean referring to that? About five corners. How long ago? Like the old, so you mean, you, you mean 1948 well, when the first Grand Prix was at Silverstone? Only that because we... They're no, right up to Keke Rosberg when he... When he okay. Um, so when, when did he do around 150 miles an hour because he was flat through stone, flat through club? Yeah, so I don't know. About about so it was an old runway. Mid-80s. Old RAF runway and uh, they used to go up and back. Because the first Grand Prix was where? The first British Grand Prix was where, Tiff? Well, they, had, they, they used the word at Brooklands, but I don't think that's not the same. But the first year of Formula One was, you know, the World Championship started in 1950, but then they had a British Grand Prix in 48 and 49 at Silverstone. Yeah. I think they had they used the word also Brooklands in about 1926. So it's, yeah. it's always, but the first World Championship was 1950. Um, anyway, so that's uh, the MotoGP at, in uh, Le Mans. Imps around the magnificent Laguna Seca track, diving through the famous, what's it called, it hole. Corkscrew. Uh, NASCAR, got the corkscrew. NASCAR at Darlington, another one and a half mile track. I like the one and a half miles of my sort of distance in NASCAR because they're quick. And what's the lap, what's the lap time? One and a half miles? Like 35 seconds? Know. I don't know. Like I don't know. I can't throw my things like a minute that. Yeah. Uh, and of course, not forgetting a lot of excitement up at uh, Glen Muckloch. Ah, it's yeah, sort of, of course. I know what's up there. Cooper Mach- up there. Cooper uh, are up there. Yes, Cooper up there. It's it's the Hydro Pre in a coal mine. That's it's, it's, yeah. Just Extreme E is coming back to Britain in so a coal mine. Phil, who does a, who puts this, uploads this onto YouTube and all the different uh, uh, platforms, uh-huh. he's going to Formula E with Cooper in Scotland. And not Formula E to uh, Extreme E in um, Scotland. I mean, there's no point in us telling us you where it is because spectators can't go. <laughs> I they know. don't have spectators. <laughs> they did have some last year. One of them, they let some locals come in and have put some deck chairs. So you can't go to Glen Buchlock. At least if we get rain, a full report it, from Phil. If it rains as much this week as the forecast that it's going to be, it's going to be a very mucky Machlachloch. I'll get it right now. A very mucky Glen Machlach. Whoa. Just it's spat. just south just of Glasgow, spat. by the way. Oh, if, you want to, if, you want to try, if you want to try and crawl your way through the bushes, it's, it's, it's south of Glasgow somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, good, good luck to the extremes. I'm sure. And good luck to Cupra, my new favourite brand. I do Your love, new favourite brand. I do brand love is. Cupra. We'll do a we'll do a head to head on the YouTube channel. Uh, your Maserati, and I'll I'll get a nice. I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a thing tomorrow, or maybe I'll leave it a couple of days. A quiz on a, a text vote on would you have gone to Miami or Kansas, and would you have gone to BTCC or B. British GT, but you can comment below. Let's have some of those. If there are very, now. very, there are very few true race fans like you that would go and watch three and a half hours of boom, 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 when you could go to Miami with the Rasmataz. Trust me, you finished it. You trust finished me. It. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait for the results next week. But thank you again for all your comments <laughs> on last week's podcast. Please keep them coming. Uh, we really do appreciate them, and we'll see you next week. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> God save the king. Oh yeah.